Okay, so what we're doing here, for, we, we're gonna, in this class, we're going to walk through the concepts and methodologies uh, behind creating plumbing isometrics. So first, we want to talk about uh, when and why we will use, will typically use plumbing or use isometrics. Uh, and then uh, Kyle's going to demonstrate uh, that process, the process of going uh, uh, from a system that's already laid out to a finished ISO that can be used either in a set of construction documents uh, or in, a, in what we call like our process documents. Uh, so the disclaimer here is the assumption is that, every, that most people know how to do all that, how to actually lay out uh, plumbing and piping systems in Revit. And what we're doing is simply uh, walking through the process of creating drawings from that work that's already done uh, that you can use for documentation sets. So our learning objectives, uh, deciding uh, when an isometric is the best option uh, to display the design intent actually going through the process of creating isometric views, setting the visibility graphics uh, to display only what you want to display, and then uh, and in the end, finishing out by tagging uh, those views uh, to get all the rest of the information that's actually usable to a contractor or to a code reviewer, et cetera. So how to decide when an isometric view, or when an isometric is the best option. The Obvious uh, reason to use an ITRMS review is your local authority having jurisdiction may require it. In our case, the state of Indiana, we have to submit them for um, sanitary waste and vent. So it's, you have to do it anyway. So those are typically the ones that, that we've kind of started off with, transitioning from doing a more diagrammatic approach with a riser diagram or something like that that's more CAD focused 2D to really, again, leveraging Revit and BIM, the work that we've already done laying the system out and displaying it in a way that code reviewers uh, accept that they get all the information. <coughs> so how do we use to show our design? So people that maybe aren't familiar with Revit or at least transitioning that way. Um, we very early on, and I think this is, this is typical whenever we see, um, when we hire people on and we try to transition from CAD to Revit, they intuitively they want to start, they want to keep drawing in Revit the way they drew in CAD, which is not the way that Revit works. So we will see a lot where they'll take the piping systems and they'll lay them out so that they can read them in plan. So an example here, we, everything, there was a standard, everything was like eight inches apart. Every pipe was eight inches apart, just so whenever you tagged it, the tags didn't overlay, you didn't have to mess with any of that kind of stuff, which doesn't work. Like if you have uh, like six one inch um, domestic, line, domestic water lines, we'd lay them eight inches apart. Well, if you're, you know, the architect's always gonna give you a chase that's this big, and they want you to put everything in this little chase. Well, you can't, have a, you can't have all that stuff laid out eight inches apart. It's not going to fit in the chase. Um, so you just, it, within Revit, you just can't design the same way you did in CAD. You can't, use the, you can't use the diagram. So in Revit, this is typically more accurate to what you actually have. But it becomes very convoluted, very dense in the information. Uh, it ends up getting littered with plan notes that are trying to describe on a 2D plan what uh, you're doing in 3D, um, which it actually just, I mean, just takes a ton of time. And, I'm, and I've, I've worked with uh, designers that are more used to CAD, and I, I, I will have worked trying to get their CAD designs in 2D. So I've had sheets, plan sheets, that have had, yeah, I mean, well over 70 something plan notes. So you have, I mean, you literally have to like, it gets down to the end of a huge page and you gotta <laughs> separate it and then put another one and start over. Yeah, what prompted this was a, um, a project that ended up with 220 plan notes um, that did not go over well with management. So uh, that was kind of the spark of how we, could, how can we do it different? Right. 
But in the end, state review wants an ISO. They want some sort of they want some sort of uh, uh, 3D drawing that shows the whole the system overall, not just what you're seeing in plan on a floor level basis, but they want to see the whole thing. So you would go back after the fact, typically, and create an, an ISO, it's usually single line ISO. But the emphasis here is that it's always after the fact. Like you would diagrammatically lay out all the work that you just did uh, in CAD. And the point of that was to display your design intent on a very general, uh, generic, and best practices case, which is not how Revit works. Revit doesn't work in general generic. It's very specific. Everything that you're doing is very intentional. Uh, so the point of being able to use isometrics directly in the program is to leverage the work you've already done to display that, display what uh, a contractor or your uh, code review needs without having to go through any extra effort. Plus, it's iterative. If you had to change the de plumbing design or whatever design midway through, you know, you move a pipe or you add another fixture in the isometric you've already created. That's already that's already taken place. It's already, that, that new fixture, that new piping layout. It's already there. All you have to do is maybe tag it. Um, so many options need to be considered when we're trying to decide the best way to display the design intent. So what are you trying to show? Um, is it system specific? Is it uh, location specific? And we'll get into examples of that. Uh, certain plans, so how do you want or need to show it? Typically we want to start with our, our plans. If we can get the information on an eighth inch plan and it's consistent with all the other plans, then awesome, we leave it there. It makes the, the documentation consistent, but that you can't always do that, as in the case of the image we show where all those plan notes are just cluttering that thing up. Uh, so certain plans may not be able to show all the design detail that you need to convey the intent. Uh, will the design be easily understood? So whether, again, whether it's going to a plan view or using an ISO, uh, to clearly convey what you're trying to do uh, for that particular system. And how much time needs to be spent on any particular view uh, to convey that design. So is it faster to cram plan notes on an eighth inch scale plan? Or is, it, or is it faster just to create an additional drawing that has everything on it? So again, what, we, what are we trying to show? With an ISO and, and for plumbing, we're looking at the system diagram, the overall layout, showing all the fixtures, the general pipe routing, uh, the valving, the accessories that make that up, and then finally, all the notes and tags that describe the system uh, so that it could be constructed in the field. Again, how are we trying to show it? So here's an example. Initially, we want to stick with the eighth inch, eighth inch plan. Keep it consistent with the rest of the construction documents. But this is what Revit actually looks like when you lay these things out in, in confined spaces. There's the, what you don't take into account with 2D is obviously the third D. Everything lays out on top of each other. You, that is not clearly defined in anything that you're looking at. It's just a giant, uh, giant mess. So then you'll want to scale up. You get more space. You get greater separation uh, between all your systems and the lines. You, can, you have the ability to tag things, but you can't get everything in there. So then finally, going to an isometric, you can display everything that you need to. People can visually see what you're trying to do uh, without having, and, and you've got tons of space. Um, to add all the additional information, the tagging, the noting, everything that you need to do to make sure that this design is clearly conveyed. So again, will the design be easily understood? With isometrics, yeah, the routing becomes a lot 
clearer. We're able to, with the isometric, just to isolate down to only what we want to show. So if we're looking at, in this case, um, for um, design review where we have to show our routing for the domestic waste and vent, we can get it down to only domestic waste and vent. You don't have to see all the walls. We put the, we'll put the floors in just for reference for us or for a reviewer, but it's not necessary. Uh, but again, this is all work that was, for the most part, is usually, I mean, it, it's done in, in Revit uh, via uh, the 2D plans or sections. But once it's done once, all you have to do is uh, create ISOs uh, to leverage the work you've already done. You ha you're able uh, to tag and note tight areas uh, that may not be clear and planned because you have everything else that's in the way. Uh, so where plans don't have space uh, for all those nuts and dimensions, uh, using an ISO, uh, you're able to get, you're able to create space for yourself to be able to put those tags in, and you're also able to display and tag stacked pipe because it's a three-dimensional view. Uh, things that you would not be able to see in 2D. Uh, having a different scale, having a larger scale means you have less clutter, you have more space again for tagging and noting. And within Revit, you have the ability, again, to change the visibility of the surrounding model. Um, makes the, the plumbing design a lot clearer. So, and you're also creating more white space in which you can tag in. Isometrics, we find a lot of times are actually a lot faster than trying to cram plan notes uh, to, to convey all, that, all the information, the design intent that, that we have to put on there to make our designs uh, readable, legible to uh, code review and uh, to contractors. Uh, so we can alleviate a lot of the time spent doing all of these and alleviate even having some of these notes in general. Uh, a lot of these things are go to this point. So the, having all these notes, we have to, we'll have to do these things. We'll have to note the same thing multiple times. So if you do this on every floor, a lot of these notes will tell you that we got a four inch uh, sanitary going up and down. And then on the level above, you have to say the same note. If you have it in isometric view, you see that information, so you don't have to convey it with a note. So it would save a lot of time with all those repetitive tags. You can create single views uh, that clearly display uh, design intent for either single systems or multiple systems. So the ability to isolate systems to display individual design intent or to combine specific systems so that you can see how those systems are relating to each other. Uh, and the choice of, again, filtering the surrounding environment uh, to just display if it's, if it's for domestic water or waste and vent, uh, just displaying those pieces of equipment, plumbing fixtures that are hooked to that system or in the case of uh, doing kitchens where you can actually just, you want to keep all the kitchen equipment so you can see the relationship, the physical relationship between uh, all that pipe, sit, all the pipe routing to um, the fixtures that are being used in the space. So I'm going to briefly walk through and, and Kyle is going to interject whenever he can, um, what Kyle's going to be showing you, kind of the overview of what the, uh, what he's doing and this will all be covered in a handout in in great detail so and probably don't probably feel like we're skipping handout. over it quickly so start with creating isometric views uh, so again we're doing a lot of this we're creating more I we find that we are creating more ISOs to display the design intent than what is required of us uh, by state because the more that we do this um, the more, con the more the more contractors we work with, and the contractors that are seeing some of the the, the, the drawings that we're able to produce for them, the more they're actually asking for it. Um, majority of the drawings that we produce in, in ISO may not actually make it out, but they do get uh, published for our records as kind of our design uh, intent. So whenever in the field, if something ever comes back and they have a question about uh, any piece of equipment that's on our system, we have something to look at uh, to give them an answer of why 
that might be, and, just, and it, it, a lot of it's for design justification. Uh, so he's going to cover a few ways, there are many ways that we do, uh, that we can create ISOs in Revit, uh, starting with 3D default views, overall building systems is typically where this will go, in, where this will go into. Uh, there's some new tools uh, with the latest versions of Revit where you can just simply select a system and it will create an ISO for you. It will, it will section box it down. Um, this is one he's, he's going to cover because this is the one that we see probably the most of is creating ISOs from callouts. And what it allows us to do is it, it pretty much does, we create ISOs that are location specific, maybe not um, system specific. So when areas get very congested, like what you've seen before, we will create a call out on that area on the plan and then do an ISO of that call out. And what that allows us to do is make a direct reference in our CDs and our, our sheets from the, from the plan directly to the ISO that we're placing on another sheet. So in these particular cases, uh, just a, quick, a couple of quick examples. Instead of trying to tag all of this stuff, we'll, we'll tag just the fixtures, but we're not tagging any of the routing that's inside here. Instead, we'll, we've uh, created an isometric view that has all that information displayed on it. It's a lot clearer. It's usually cleaner and easier to make this than it is to try to get all that information tagged in such a tight space. Here again in uh, this example, this is a uh, eight-story dormitory. So we've called out all of the interior uh, restrooms and shower areas, and then uh, created the ISOs placed on the sheet. So the domestic water uh, here on the left, and the sanitary on the right. And just this one drawing covers eight floors of information. You don't have to tag the up and down stuff because it's all visually right there. Um, you can see how the, the overall system changes because if you're using this in Revit to actually flow information down, so as uh, you know, the, the fixtures at the top flow into the system, um, that system picks up from, from top to bottom. Uh, so the piping will change at a certain point once the system gets enough into it. And all that is clearly documented in one drawing. Kyle's going to talk about uh, or go through visibility graphics. Um, the filters, the graphics and filters in Revit that uh, we use to best display those systems. So creating view templates that um, these type of things, you, you, you pretty much you do it once. You set up a template, your template file, and you have, you have it set to where you do filters. So he'll, go, he'll show you how to do that. But you're doing it one time, you're saving it in a template. So then the next job, all you have to do is select that template, and it will filter any view you have to just show the system or whatever it is that you want to show. That's repetitive. Uh, we'll go through uh, creating filters for the proper viewing of systems. Uh, and then going through isometric view orientation. The way it's been done in the past, and it's one of those like one of those really nice things about Revit, is that in the past you would do like the 45 degree ISOs because that was the easiest thing to do, and you're doing everything by line. In Revit, whenever you're so, whenever you're creating isometric views, you can it can literally be anything. It's a 3D model, and you can change it to whatever you want to to make it to show all the things that you want to see. Um, you know, if it was just 45 degrees and it was on, in a 3D model, a lot of times you'd have pipes that would be lined up behind each other and so you still couldn't see it. So you're still kind of in that same position where you can't show everything, but because it's a 3D model that's manipulated, you can manipulate it. You can just you can change it around ever slightly you want to and all the information, all, the, all that stuff is always there. 
And then in the end, once you get it set up to where you can see everything, uh, locking the view so that you can begin tagging it. Uh, so you know, in this image, you're setting up the model view. So he's so in the, we're isolating just plumbing. You're taking care, taking out all the architecture, taking out all the mechanical, the electrical, so you can just see what you're wanting to uh, to start to filter down, and then actually filtering it uh, to the specific systems you want. So here on the left, um, in this case, uh, location specific, but it's the the plumbing and sanitary and vent uh, for one particular area uh, to doing it for a stack of areas. Uh, and then finally, we'll go through actually tagging the ISO so you can get all the information onto one sheet. We'll talk about uh, a couple of the quirks with it, uh, of doing it. Uh, there's really, really nice button uh, in Revit that I'm, if people have done this before, they don't know what I'm talking about, that tag all button, which seems like really nice because you can just hit one button and it tags everything. But then, and, and I can see, you know, we have someone doing this, which is what, <laughs> that's exactly what, that's, you know, you just, uh, it would be so nice, but, and Kyle will show you why that, that, that kind of, right, well, yeah, and so then, right. So we need to do uh, plumbing ISOs for intermediates to kind of get this something like that, but. Um, uh, tagging the fixtures and piping uh, using leaders versus using uh, an aligned uh, tag. Uh, annotative symbols. And, and this is something that, and maybe we'll get into it. When we, st when we start doing this, um, and when we're, we're actually using an ISO to convey our systems, we, we want to convey all of the information that we would put on a, on a plan sheet we want to put it on the ISO. So we still want to put symbols and, and uh, plan notes directly on an ISO. That's how we're, so we can get that information directly transferred, but Revit doesn't let us actually put symbols and abbreviations on 3D view, so we have to do a workaround for that. Um, so we'll cover that. And then finally, we'll end up actually placing these on a sheet uh, for design review. So a couple, again, a couple examples here. The uh, one here on the left, something that is location specific um, versus something that is system specific. So location being just one restroom. We have no floors. All we have is the fixtures and we have the systems that feed them. Uh, all the information is there, everything's clearly tagged and conveyed uh, versus um, uh, uh, image of a gang of restrooms that we're just showing waste and vent for review. And then finally, we'll, co we'll go through a couple <laughs> examples of completed sheets. Once you get all this stuff done, uh, putting it on sheets that uh, you're submitting and putting over uh, for design review or for construction documentation. And from there, I'm going to let Kyle play with this for a while. So it's going to feel like I'm going pretty quick, but I want to make sure we go through the concepts. Again, it's all in the handout, detailed step by step, exactly what I'm going to talk about. Um, and feel free to ask questions at any point. Um, Hour seems like it's an eternity, but it's really not when you're trying to explain something like this. Um, so here we have just a uh, gang restroom. Um, in this case, it's uh, three stories, but uh, right now we're just only going to mess with the first floor. And so what we're going to do to start this process is we're going to go up to the View tab and Call Out. You've got multiple options here. You have uh, just a rectangular Call Out or you have a Sketch Call Out. In this case, you might look at this restroom and say, okay, I'm just going to use a rectangular call out on this. Um, but in the instance of having these water coolers and mop basin up there in a janitorial room, in our case, we'll go ahead and include that in that ISO. Um, it doesn't make sense not to. It's close enough to what you're trying to show, and it's 
relatively grouped together. Um, so there's no reason the way we've discussed it in our office not to include something like that. Um, we're not restroom specific. Um, we'll do this kitchens and janitorial rooms, even stacked classrooms that have sinks in them. Um, so in this instance, I would go in and I would choose sketch. So I'm just gonna go in here and roughly sketch out around this restroom relatively quickly. Um, it doesn't really matter because you can go in and modify the extents of the call out later. So we have our call out around the area we're wanting to show in our isometric. Um, the first thing I will do, and this is just kind of a quirk and it really might be something um, to consider, is I'll, I'll click on that call out and I'll come in and put it on a call out specific template just so that it helps with grouping in my browser. Now underneath my floor plans, I have a call out for that. As soon as that call out's made, generally I will go in and we will give it a name specific to the area you're trying to call out. Um, room name wise is normally what we would do. Uh, but I would, we'll just call this gang restroom for now. If I could spell right or capitalize. Um, so now that we have that, naming that view is very important for the next step because the next step will be where we start making this ISO. So I'm going to go up to view again and I'm going to start with a 3D default view. And as Phil was explaining, there's multiple ways to get to this step. You can do a 3D default view. The issue with that is, is you're gonna spend most of your time whittling down to the area that you wanna to get to because it's gonna do the extents of your model. It's not very time effective um, and it shows everything. Uh, walls, ceilings, so you cannot see into the building at all. Um, doing a system selection is great if you're wanting to show the entire system, but chances are you're going to want to show location specific. Um, so again, you will be whittling down. That's kind of why we've settled on the call out being the way to set it up. So we've got our overall view here, and depending on the size of your model, it could take a while to get down to what you need to see. So this is where naming that view comes in handy. If you go up to that view cube, you can orient to view, floor plans, and there's our call out. If it was just named first floor call out, copy one, it wouldn't be very clear to you. Um, just a quick naming at the beginning is very helpful, especially on this project. As you see, we had a bunch of call outs. So we're just gonna click on that view. It'll take a second. So now what we have is we have a view started relatively mocking our call out. Um, little tip and trick is this building happened to be in an angle. You can click that section box. maybe. And if you click somewhere in the center, you can rotate the section box to match the uh, orientation of your building at any angle. What we found is, is if you don't, if you don't rotate that section with the view, when you get into the ISO, you end up with slivers, a pipe coming off. It doesn't look very good. It's not a clean cut. So once we're in here, we're gonna rotate it around. Normally what we'll do is we'll come up to this view cube and start with one of these standard views, northwest, northeast. Um, it, it doesn't really matter. Then we'll come in and we will stretch, I'll stretch the section box to the highest point and we stretch our ISOs to include all the foundation work. And this is one of the problems when you try and do it. You've got everything on, so I'm gonna turn thin lines on real quick. 
you've got everything on, it's hard to find the section box. So basically, we've got a rough idea of our area. Here's our ISO. Um, the one thing the section box won't do is it won't, it won't copy what the callout does in the shape of it. It will go to a square extents. So if you're doing an odd shape, you won't get a clean jog in the section. It's, uh, hopefully that's one thing that um, we can get into Revit. It would make it very handy. So we've got a rough idea of the area now. But as we were saying before, we haven't done any filtering. We're seeing all the mechanical. You're seeing all the lights. Um, you're seeing um, all the diffusers. You're seeing stairs. You're seeing walls. That's not needed to display the plumbing design. So this is where we're going to start going in and filtering and setting up templates um, to best display this. So we've got our view, so I'm going to go over to the properties. And right now, we're set to none. Uh, I'm gonna, I've already got one set up. I'm going to go ahead and select it. Um, and then you can see it change in the background. So that quick change just isolated entire waste and vent. And as Phil was explaining, you set it up once, you're done. Add it to your master template, and it's the most time effective thing we've found yet in our office as far as how to quickly display a system like this. There's a, this is very, it's open to your own ideas. These settings don't have to be set like this, but this is just what we found over trial of 15 to 20 projects that we like the best and what actually publishes and prints the best. Um, feel free to do as you please. This is just a, a suggestion, basically. Um, we like to set this detail level to fine. Um, what that does is, is it actually shows a pipe instead of a 2D outline of it. <clears throat> and our, our office has been at this for a few years, so we've developed all of our own templates. But there are, if you're just starting out, there are vendors that I'm, I'm sure you'll see here that have packages available to you that you can, you can buy and all of these filters, all these, uh, a lot of this uh, fixture and uh, fixtures and equipment is already prepackaged for you. And so you wouldn't have to go through the rigor of doing this. Um, but it's still nice uh, to, it's still nice to have a, a firm understanding in your office of what your templates are doing. Uh, so just throw that out there, there's always options. Yes. Yeah. Yep. For, uh, well, everything usually prints in black and white, and you have the uh, um, your kind of then your line styles that would usually dictate. But uh, we do a lot. We're seeing a lot now uh, with contractors. We'll have digital everything, so all the digital is color. No, what will no, they see the same thing? Yeah, but whenever it actually prints, they don't. They'll use they'll usually print it in black and white. Yeah. So your red is kind of a lot darker. There's always there's usually a distinct. I mean, you can still distinguish between the two. And that's one of the things to be careful of if you are going to set up your own templates is color is is relatively important for printing, not so much for displaying. Right. It does have an effect. So if but, you like, when we get into it, you'll see we don't really have a lot of dark colors. It's for that reason. But the way, it, the way it's drawn out, that's where the, the line display is where that is whenever, the, uh, whenever everything's in black and white, all the lines that actually draw those pipes are still um, set to the pipe types that they are. That it's, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, those were early on. <laughs> Yeah, and that was, that's one thing I wanted right, to point out. That's part of the visibility graphics. That's what I want to point out um, here in a second. So you've got that detail level set to fine. What we found works best for model display is hidden line. Hidden line picks up the colors that you're going to set in your filters. Realistic <laughs> picks up the material. It does not print well at all. I would highly recommend, no matter what you do, keep this setting at hidden line. 
So once you've got that set, it's, it's all self-explanatory. The only thing that we do um, to organize in here as well is we make our own drawing type for the plumbing isometrics. We separate them from the plans. We separate them from um, sections. They get their own number because we use them so heavily. So once we're done with that, we can go in and mess with the model categories. So if you look, we've got almost everything unchecked. The things we do have checked are mechanical equipment because we use this for kitchens and mechanical rooms and that's how we'll pick up the water heaters, the softeners, research pumps, mixing valves. So you do something special with your equipment then? If you're talking about boxes and water heaters, the same shot, which one is just start to turn off? If it's a VV, so we, we have separate drawing files that separate those out. So mechanical is working in a in their drawing, which will have uh, their, all, the, all the mechanical equipment, or what's considered mechanical equipment, so the VV boxes, all that kind of stuff. And then plumbing has a separate drawing that has them equipped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so discipline, so we, so yeah, it, for any given building, you'll have six, six. disciplines yeah. working on the same building, and they're just all uh, just linked together. Linked together. Yep. Yeah. And then to kind of further that question, Yes, you will see mechanical equipment if, if that file's linked in. So if you go to Revit links, we unload every file except for architectural in the isometric template. So mechanical will never bleed through. It, it shouldn't be a problem. But you have the option if you want to. If you want to. So you're, so you're actually using the plumbing measures on the architectural? You're not no, we put our own no, pictures yeah, the, the plumbing in. pictures are in this are in from the plumbing file. So we will, we can, you can use the uh, coordinate tools, copy monitor. Mm -hmm. um. We're taking the uh, next step to, um, architecture is gonna go in and make detail components to where in their model, they're not putting real fixtures in because they don't really need them. Um, but they're gonna go in and make detail components just so we see where placement is. Um, so that will even get rid of the copy monitor issue eventually. Um, it's, we've tested it out and it's, it's pretty slick. It, it seems to speed up, it seems to speed up the models, especially if they're putting in real equipment and then we're linking their model and putting in our own. It's just reducing file size. It, it, it's, it's become very, very helpful. What's that? Custom fixtures, can they still be generated within Revit? Yeah, yeah, and, and that's, yeah, every job gets, we, we have a standard a stock library of things we want to use, and then when specialty items come up, uh, we'll create them directly in uh, the job file we're working on and, and, and save them in there. They don't, if it's specialty, that doesn't, doesn't usually make it to the library, but uh, it does go to that one particular job, yes? Yes, Correct. Like, like we might go in and copy monitor a uh, rooftop unit um, because in our office plumbing does the gas design. Yeah. So that would be an instance where we would, but we're very specific on, on what we actually do copy monitor. Mm -hmm. And then through the filters, they've got the ability to look at our Revit file, all the mechanical equipment in that file, and then filter it down to just equipment that's located on the roof or just equipment that's located in any particular spot that they're feeding gas to. So you separate the two models, mechanical? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mechanical, plumbing, electrical, architectural, interior has their own. Civil. Civil. Structural. Structural. Oh, I mean, it's, we'll typically, we'll separate it. I mean, there's, I really haven't found a reason uh, for the two to be together yet. It's easier um, to keep them apart, uh, particularly because mechanical fog is really big. You got a lot of Revit families and a lot of information associated with those Revit families. Just, those, those files just get ridiculous. We, we do both. We, we, we do, we, we've done it both ways. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Mm -hmm. And that's normally what we'll do. We, um, we've been using designation a lot in the families, and that is the quickest, easiest way to filter down. Um, quick, simple. This, this just allows you to, you can just isolate any view by just unlinking the mechanical file. It gets rid of everything. So yeah, basically we're gonna leave mechanical equipment on, all the pipes, accessories, fittings, um, and the plumbing fixtures, and the only other one we leave on is floors, and that's it. There really isn't anything in the annotative categories that need, needs to be set, uh, but filters, this is where it gets a little tricky. It's not too, it's not too bad. Basically, to get what you want, you just add the classification of the system you're trying to display. It's, it's pretty easy. Um, there are exceptions. In, in the instance of how Revit sees sanitary, that also includes storm, it includes acid waste, it includes grease waste. So to filter that down even more is where you have to add the system and then turn it off. That's the only little nuance that I've found doing this system so far. I wish it was something that we could get into Revit. There doesn't seem to be very many classifications. <clears throat> mm -mm. It's not, and that's what we've fought. Mm -mm. Yep. Yep. And that's what we, we've we've attempted <laughs> to do this. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So normally for us, this is just, again, a suggestion. Um, a, a thin line weight set to black will make the pipe stand out on the sheets and uh, your patterns will just fill in the pipe. And again, we've picked lighter colors. Um, again, it's completely up to you, up to you, whatever you decide office wide to do. Um, then I go, when I do this, I go ahead and add the other systems in and turn them off just to make sure I don't have any stragglers. Um, in the case of existing, you might end up accidentally putting something on the wrong system, a fittings on the wrong classification. It, this just cleans it up even more. And that way you, you're not gonna have a hanging hanging valve out here in the plan. It just, it's, a, it's just a safety thing, and again, it needs to be set up one time, and that's it. So basically, once you've got your filter done, save your template away, you end up with a view. So we've got an overall view. We're seeing from the vent through the roof down to the foundation. So where before you were drawn at a 45 and everything was kind of diagrammatic, we now have the ability to come in, rotate around it, and settle on a view that is going to display most of the design. The one issue is, is that you will never find a, a, a rotation or a view that will display everything clearly. It just doesn't happen. Um, so don't fight it and don't get angry like I did the first time. Um, just kind of settle somewhere in the middle is basically how I do. Um, so in this case, what I found was rotating around to about this angle right here was going to display most of what was gonna be in the chase behind the water closets. And that's kind of where the bulk of the waste and vent is here. But as you see, your, vent's kinda, your vent stack's kinda hidden behind your waste stack. But we also have plans to show that. So it's not a complete loss. Um, I, I typically try not to completely hide it. So once I have my view typically where I want it, I'm gonna go down and lock this view. It's the only way you can start tagging. So if you go down and you have to be in the view, um, you go down to un, uh, unlock 3D view. If you click on save orientation, it's gonna prompt for a name. And again, I name this pretty much what it is. So now once that's locked, we can start, we can start tagging. Um, so we're gonna start with the tag all command. Um, 
So if we come in and tag all, you, you get these options. And we're going to start with plumbing fixtures first. I'm going to come in and select plumbing fixtures. I don't want a leader on it. And all of our fixtures are tagged. The one thing I did forget is make sure you've got your ISO set to at least a quarter inch. Eighth inch will never be readable. So once we've got it set back to a quarter inch, there's our tags. It's tagged every fixture in the plan. Now all it is is, is the small task of moving them. Um, that's the only part that can get a little tricky. Because you, you have a few selection options. Nice thing, but by default puts everything right there, right in the yeah. middle of the fixture. Exactly. But it's nice that you can so you, you can drag it over top of everything and then just filter it down just the tags, and then you can just in one swipe move everything in a bank of, of tags all <clears> over at the same uh, to the same position relative to the fixture that it's tagging. Mm -hmm. um, Life's a little easier. So that was the pro of tag all. <laughs> The con of doing tag all in an ISO is if we go to pipe tags, and we'll, we'll do it first without a leader, like we were going to align the tag with the pipe. If we click OK, that doesn't work out too well. Um, you it's could tagging go, every, little, every little piece, every little transition that the pipe has. It wants to tag, it wants to tag everything. So. If you're like me, I went in and I tried, oh, I'm going to try it with a leader and see what happens. It's probably actually worse that way. Um, and you're going to spend way more time trying to move those. It's, it's really not even worth looking at. Um, this is the feature you want to work so bad because <laughs> you, tag, you have to tag so much pipe. You spend so much of your time doing that, that if that feature worked, that would just save you hours, but it doesn't. It just does that. <laughs> so then you have to go back in and tag it all manually anyway. Yep. <laughs> so you're back to using the standard tag all and basically just going in and, and tagging as you normally would on a plan. The other option is to, um, like, in our office, we have a um, we have a tag that will align with the system. You can't use it with a leader. I would turn it off, but it just it's quick, fast, um, and we I normally use that on the stacks, on the long runs where I've got open pipe, and I can get. I can get an ISO like this tagged um, in all the open areas 30 seconds. It's, it's so much quicker um, if you have an aligned tag. I would highly recommend finding one, making one. It's really easy. It's, it's not that difficult. So once we've got it tagged, um, we're going to cook and show this and show you the finished version. When it's said and done, you're going to end up with something like this. So you've got, you have some aligned tags, you have um, tags with leaders, your fixtures are tagged, you don't have any up or down notes on your stacks, you have uh, no plan notes, um, and if you make a change, your tag in your pipe moves. So it's, it's a very big plus to try and display and, and note information in these compared to on the plan, because chances are you're going to run into conflict when you move something. That's kind of another reason we look towards this. There's so much more space here to convey the info you want. Um, it just becomes very, very handy. Do you find this helps with refining your design as well? Absolutely. No way to put that clean out in kind of automatically. Correct, yeah. <laughs> No, that clean out is just, it's literally um, just an extrusion like an inch above the floor and we pipe off of it. That's all it is. Um, who's seen really big benefit for us doing it like this? It, our newer people working for us, this, th they can see this is how it's supposed to be designed. Oh, okay, I'm supposed to combine everything in the chase and it drops once. 
Um, first project we did a couple years ago, we had a guy drop everything <laughs> out of every carrier. We're like, no, no, hold on, that's not how we do it. But all he was given was a set of 2D plans to look at. He, it just didn't make sense to him. It's a very good learning tool. Um, it's been very good for um, AHJs because we're showing them, yes, we've designed with a trap on this drain. You don't have to note it up. Um, we don't have to fix something and send it back to you. We can get very, very specific before they ever look at it. It also helps owners understand what they're getting. A 2D plan really doesn't make sense to much, many owners, but a colored plan with notes showing this is where the stuff is routing, it makes sense to them then. What copy we, it. Yeah. Copy the call out, paste it to selected views or align to selected views. Yep. That's it. There's no, when it, cause we'll, let's, are you, you good? Yeah, I'm pretty much. Um, we were going to go into uh, sheets next, so. Um, oh, look, we need to, cause we need some, fine. Go ahead. some questions if you want. Okay. Um, yeah. Doing a call out, there's no direct reference from the ISO view to the call out. Um, as it goes to sheets. As it goes to sheets. Revit doesn't have the capability to do from a plan to an ISO yet. So basically, we're kind of faking that. That call out, what was What's that? that? Yeah, using, we're, we're, we're referencing the call, we're re referencing the ISO that's on a sheet with a symbol mm -hmm. and then attaching it to the call out. And that's all it is. But then on the sheet, you also have to do the same workaround where you have to put some sort of uh, reference uh, on that sheet that you can then just tag back to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It can be. Um, this project that I was using as a template, we were, we were contemplating doing a full ISO on it. And what we had decided on was splitting the building and basically into units and that call out was a unit. And basically it would call out between ISOs because yeah, you're right. There's no way you're ever gonna get everything on one sheet like they're wanting. It's impossible. It would never be readable and they complain about it, so. We've got a couple minutes, I wanna just like, <laughs> try to get through the last of our stuff. Um, we do call, we're using ISOs for a lot more than just the plumbing, um, and, not, and a lot more than just uh, code review. It actually is a lot clearer to, to design and, and show ISOs than uh, it is in many cases for our plans, so, um, Using ISOs not only uh, for the you know, domestic, um, but for very specific systems in, in, in specific areas. Uh, so when you have uh, systems that are located just in like kitchens or labs, uh, using ISOs to display all that information rather than, than mucking up plans. Uh, we use it for mechanical systems as well. Not necessarily, not always on plans and probably 90% of the ISOs we, we create don't always make it to drawings. They're, they make it to like a, a, a published design set that's internal, that's for us. Uh, so the mechanical, uh, the duct, so duct systems and piping systems, um, I think we're, it was uh, mentioned about using, that we use our ISOs for design development as well. So being able to see a system design, not, not just in terms of its you know, physical layout, the materials and everything that make that up, but also using the same design for uh, being able to document flow characteristics, uh, being able to document uh, relationship of the system as a whole. Uh, this is simply taking the view, taking this view, copying it, grabbing all the tags and just replacing them with custom tags that we have uh, that display, you know, that same pipe, but the, G, the flow rates, the loss and the velocity.
No, that's all in the system. So that's and that's part of that for for us using Revit to, I mean, really leveraging what Revit what Revit is capable of doing, uh, but then having a graphical means of documenting that. Um, just laying, or just just showcasing design intent. Contractors that find out that we do this stuff ask for the stuff as supplemental information. So a lot of times after we've submitted drawings and they need more information to show what's going on around uh, in a any particular area, this is what we always end up having to produce for them, come back with them with. And then it's just, you can see everything in one spot and then it's easy for people to get. Okay, at least we got everything in. And now there's like a minute for questions if anybody <laughs> has any. Do you model small diameter? Or flexible. Do we model small? We've do we model small? I have to repeat all the questions. <laughs> do we model small diameter or flexible pipe? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Even though the contractor may want to do it differently. Yep. Uh, yep. I mean, they have they have that, but we need to particularly to do what we just showed you, where all that information is associated with the system. Everything has to be connected, so you have to be intentional about when you're designing the whole system because everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah if, there's a, yeah. yeah, if there's an opening in the pipe, the whole system fails. And that's the hardest thing to try and make that jump from CAD. It's you're designing the system and not just what you're going to publish. So apart from what you're going to do, sir, that you're showing, is there any advanced uh, tool or add-on plugin tool that operates the tool to generate traditional kind of asymmetric ones with the MPO just at all? Same delivery presentation asymmetric. There's a lot there. <laughs> and then I, I, I believe some of your question was about what Autodesk is going to do, in which I have no idea what Autodesk is going and to do. And we have not found any add-ons anywhere to assist us in this process as of right now. Are you want, you're talking about being able to quantify what is there? Yeah. Well, you can do that directly in the program anyway. Yeah, you can do that in Revit itself. Anything that goes into Revit, it, like Revit knows it's there. And so you can schedule, and we have that. We have, and that's part of doing all these things, laying it out, I mean, being very intentional about doing it the right way, is that everything gets accounted for. And then, I mean, we, we use that for cost estimating. If mm -hmm. I know how many elbows, three quarter inch elbows are in there, I can tell Revit what that costs me, and it'll add the whole thing up. I mean, it's just. We would, we would probably pull that okay. out into Navisworks and not do that in Revit. I'm sure you could. I just, I'm and, and also the dimensioning. Like the same. <coughs> dimensioning. Dimensioning? Yeah. yeah, that's all. Anything that's, anything, so it, being able to dimension in that, uh, in the ISO view, is that what you're? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, again, like every length of, every, every piece of pipe has all that information inherit in it. So that tag that I showed, you could do it there where you can just tell the tag to just display the length or to display outside diameter, inside diameter, any of that kind of stuff is all inherent in there. It's just, that's a matter of creating a tag that shows it. Another quick thing, um, we cut our time down tagging our ISOs even more by creating this rough in legend and it might be something to consider. Basically all it is is it has, it pulls the type mark for every family plumbing fixture we have and the waste vent hot and cold connections. You plop that on a sheet, there's no reason to tag every single rough end pipe on your ISO anymore. That right there um, on that ISO um, that we were working on cut 45 minutes up just, just by plopping that on a sheet. Absolutely. Right. You put that in your templates. And, there's no, and after it gets set up, there's nothing else it needs to do because it only pulls the plumbing fixtures you have in your project. All right. I think, I think, yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. You're free to go. Thank you. <laughs>